I'm going to do some examples of dot structures or Lewis dot structures as they're sometimes called using the needed available shared method. Remember needed is always eight electrons per atom unless it's hydrogen. So hydrogen only is going to need two electrons. And available is the group number on the periodic table. So the available number of electrons come from this column here. Hydrogen has one valence electron. This group has four, this group five, six, and seven. And when we subtract the needed from the available, that's the shared electrons, so those are going to be bonding electrons between atoms. And then we're going to divide by two to see the number of lines. So this is the whole purpose of this method, is to see exactly how many lines we have connecting atoms. And I'm going to do an example. And we're going to use carbon dioxide, CO2. So if we do this example, the needed, we could keep carbon separate and say eight electrons plus two times eight electrons. And that is a total of 24 electrons. The available, again, here we have to look at the periodic table. So carbon is in group four. So carbon has four electrons plus there are two oxygens, and each oxygen has six valence electrons. And when we do this, we get 16 electrons. Then we are going to subtract 14, this is eight electrons. Then we have to remember to divide by two to get the total number of lines. So this gives us four lines, and these lines must connect atoms. They can't be lines going nowhere. So we are going to put the first atom written in the middle, unless it's hydrogen. So we'll start with carbon connected to each oxygen, and we have to stick with the formula. We can only use two oxygens, and since we still need two more lines, we're just going to split those up, put one line here and one line here. So we are going to see here that carbon has two double bonds to each oxygen. And remember the available number of electrons, this has to be on the picture when we're done. And every atom needs eight electrons around it. So we look at carbon, it has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has two, four. So we're going to put two pairs of electrons around each oxygen. And we want to keep the electrons paired up. Okay, so we do that. We take a quick look. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. This carbon has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So everything's happy. And we have 16 electrons on the picture. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay. And the shape of this molecule, because there are, this has the formula AX2, this could either be linear or bent. And because carbon has two atoms around it with no lone pairs, then the shape or the molecular geometry for this is going to be linear. Okay. And I'm going to do another example below. I'll use the next page here. And we'll do uh, an example for SO3. So the needed, we've got eight electrons from sulfur plus three times eight electrons for oxygen. So that's a total of 32 electrons. The available, because sulfur and oxygen are both in the same column, they each have six valence electrons. So we don't have to break the molecule up like this, but uh, that's going to be 24 electrons. 12, that's going to be eight electrons divided by two. Again, we get four lines. 
In this case, we're going to put sulfur in the middle. And then we have three oxygens to connect, so that's going to take three lines. O, O, and O. And the fourth line, we're just going to choose. I'm going to put the fourth line between these two atoms here. So we've got our skeletal structure, and we're going to look at the central atom and make sure it has eight, two, four, six, eight. This oxygen only needs two lone pairs because it's already got two pairs of electrons. And these oxygens each need three pairs of electrons. So if we look at this, everything has eight electrons around it. Eight, 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 and eight. And if we do a quick count, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 electrons are on this picture. The shape of this, because the central atom has three atoms around it, no lone pairs, that's going to be the perfect triangle. And so we call this trigonal planar. So this one would have the shape trigonal planar.